Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we once again have a look at some of the games coming out for the Switch in this upcoming week. We'll start off as we always do by looking at some of the games that perhaps crept out or just fell through the cracks in respect to us covering them in videos such as this in the past before moving on to this week's games and we'll be covering the period of the 6th of February up until the 12th. There are a couple of big releases this week, one of course being a first party Nintendo game and a few smaller indie games to look at as well. So with all that said, let's get started. Starting with the first of just two games to mention of the games we haven't covered, this is Down in Bermuda. This sees you playing as an aviator that has been stranded for decades within the infamous mystery surrounding Bermuda. It's an adventure game filled with puzzles to solve and mysteries to uncover. There are six islands to try and conquer in your everlasting search to try and get home. This one has quite a hefty discount at the minute, 60%, and will still be in effect by the time you see this video for a few days if you are interested. And I'm pretty sure that Alex at Switch Corner has done a review for this game. I will find it and stick the link to it in the top pinned comment. Next, a game that I completely missed last week, otherwise I definitely would have featured this. This is Conarium. It says that it is inspired by the work of HP Lovecraft, which I know is becoming a very similar theme with a lot of games these days, but rarely do I see one of these games that actually sets itself within the Lovecraft universe, almost acting as a non-official sequel to one of his stories. This is inspired by At the Mountains of Madness and is set just after the original story, seeing you playing as a new character that explores the Antarctic base mentioned in that novella. It's selling for £14.99 or your regional equivalent. Moving on to this week's releases then, and we start with quite a cheap game, only £4.49. This is Negative The Way of Shinobi. This appears to be a 2D platformer, which opts for quite a striking use of black and white in its aesthetic, mixing it up occasionally with a bit of colour in terms of things like fire and blood by the looks of it. It describes itself as a hardcore 2D platformer, a phrase that I see so often on the eShop these days, and whilst I can't quite work out what it is from the trailer, it does seem to allude to there being some sort of mechanic involving the use of the black and white. I'm assuming it has something to do with stealth which is mentioned here in the blurb. The animation does look a little slow I must say so hopefully it plays better than it seems to come across in the trailer and if you are interested it comes out on the 11th. Also out on the 11th is a game called Summer Catchers. This is selling for £8.99, or again, of course, your regional equivalent, which will be down at the bottom of the screen, as it does have 50% off of that price up until the 15th of February. Having just watched the trailer, this appears to be an auto runner, or auto driver, I guess, where you are making your way across a number of stages, avoiding a number of hazards. It looks as if you can choose particular parts to upgrade your car with at the beginning of a stage to help you avoid the particular challenges that that level will bring. It goes on to mention in the blurb that as well as the racing aspects there is a heavy emphasis on story as well as rhythm and puzzle solving and it looks as if there are a number of collectibles to find as you go along too. Next up then is a game called The Flower Collectors, which I believe has been out on Steam for a little while and has okay scores on Metacritic around the 65-66% mark. This is a detective story set in Barcelona in 1977, but in terms of its inspiration it goes for a film noir style and also uses anthropomorphic characters. Having witnessed a murder, you team up with a young journalist to try and solve the case. It looks as if you'll be investigating crime scenes, putting together a chronology, and interrogating witnesses. It's selling for £17.99 but does have 10% off of that price up until launch day, which is the 11th. Get a story. What about it? He looks... cautious. Not every day there's a corpse lying on your doorstep. Then probably my game for the week, this is Little Nightmares 2, published by Bandai Namco. The first of these games is also on the Switch, that's a game that I own, and you played as a young girl in a raincoat named Six who woke up on a ship and had to try and navigate her way to safety, moving through a number of rooms containing various threats. It was basically a puzzle platformer with quite a macabre, spooky atmosphere and was fun but flawed. 
In this sequel you play as a boy named Mono who is guided by Six from the first game and it says you are trapped in a world that has been distorted by the humming transmissions of a distant tower. Mono and Six must face a host of new threats from the terrible residents of this world, discovering the dark secrets of the Signal Tower. This is selling for £24.99 and there is a demo available on the eShop if you are intrigued, plus this will be one of the games that we review on the channel next week. Next is a game called Tri-6 Infinite, which I included based solely on the screenshots because it reminded me a tiny bit of a game I used to love on the Nintendo 64 called Extreme G. Having just read the blurb and watched the trailer, it's nothing like that game at all, other than it's got a motorbike in it. This is an endless runner apparently, where you need to avoid obstacles and go for as long as possible to try to record the high score. It says there are three playable vehicles, each with different mechanics, 11 unlockable power-ups and more than 300 obstacle variations. It includes multiplayer for up to four players split screen and also has global leaderboards and is selling for £7. Now, how about a uh, Extreme G remake? That would be nice. Also coming out this week, not a game, but there is some DLC for The Outer Worlds. This expansion, named Peril on Gorgon, is available for £11.99, or you can buy it with the game for what is called the Board Approved Bundle for £64.99. Now the wording on the eShop is a little confusing, it says that for this price, provided I'm reading it properly, you will get Peril on Gorgon and also the Murder on Eridanos DLC that is releasing later this year. That seems to stand up because the game itself is £50 and this DLC is £12, yet they're charging £65, so I'm assuming you do get that extra piece of DLC when it releases, but the way it's worded is just a little confusing. Then we have a game called Undermine, which is a dungeon-based roguelite, very much in the style of something like The Binding of Isaac, although it does seem to have a few traits of its own, with some of the rooms looking like they need some mild puzzle solving, think the dungeons of Legend of Zelda, and you can also rescue allies, craft equipment, etc. You'll collect gold, die, upgrade yourself and go again, very much in the style of every other roguelite, but when these games do get that loop right, it can be incredibly engrossive, not to mention addictive. It sells for £15.49 or your original equivalent, and is another game that comes out on the 11th. Then on the 12th we have the big one for the week, this of course is Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. Super Mario 3D World is a game that released on the Wii U, it's a game I own and I have to be honest I'm probably in the vast minority here but it's a game I never really got on with. It's a perfectly good game, Nintendo very rarely make bad ones but I just, I don't know, I didn't really get the catsuit thing, it made the game feel a bit too easy at times but for the rest of the world that thought it was fantastic, it's very nearly here now on the Switch. There was of course a bit more information from Nintendo on the Bowser's Fury part of the game the other week and again it seemed to have Cat Mario going up against Bowser in an epic battle and Bowser Jr seems to be on side with Mario in this particular part of the game. It's selling for full whack £49.99 which is standard pricing for Nintendo on the Switch thus far and please do let me know your thoughts on this game, I'd be very intrigued to read them in the comments section. What is it that makes this one so good? I have always favoured the 2D Mario games over the 3D, maybe that's it but perhaps I'll give it another go on the Switch this time round. And finally for the week then, we have Gal Gun Returned. I think there's already a Gal Gun game on the Switch, is there not? Gal Gun 2? And I have to be honest, this is not a series I know much about. Is this not a series where you have to shoot girls with happy juice or something? Oh mate, that sounds funny just saying it. Pheromone shots, here we go, I've just read it in the blurb, sorry. Steady your aim and land a shot and you'll trigger an ecstasy shot. Once you meet certain conditions, you can really concentrate and marvel at a girl from a bunch of different angles. An absolute wealth of panty design, okay. 
It's a reimagining of the first game in the series, it says here, to celebrate the 10th anniversary. And it's selling for £45, £45, although it does have 10% off of that price up until launch. So there you have it, you have a first party Nintendo release this week. A game I'm looking forward to in Little Nightmares, like I said, look out for our review of that one. And a few other games of varying degrees of interest. Which of these games, if any, are you picking up? Please do let us know in the comment section below. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course, and until next time, happy gaming.